Donc je suis Denis Vernet, euh, agriculteur au GAEC des Fabres. Où... I am Denis Vernet. I am in the uh, farmers group of the Fab. We mainly produce maps. After uh, what you've just heard, we do use interrow crop with uh, lavender hybrid. We work with an innovative group uh, that, uh, well, with the group I'm, I'm chairing. Let's give you a notion of pedoclimatic uh, issues. So, thirdly, we're going to tell you about the crop coverage and how we implement it. So, the farm is in the uh, southern regions of France, 500 and 600 meters of altitudes. Our soils are very superficial, full of rocks. We talked about plasticity, but when you see uh, uh, the size of the plants, we don't have as much uh, size as in your pots for the roots. So our soils are pretty uh, draining and porous and poor uh, in terms of organic matter. We have Mediterranean uh, climate and uh, mountain-like in the winter. So we have about 700 meter, millimeters of uh, rain in the winter, so, uh, in the year, sorry. So three associated people, fourth since the beginning of this year, 264 hectares of cultivated. Uh, eh, eh, eh. <sighs> Breathe, <laughs> please. <laughs> so we do uh, sustainable uh, agriculture because we use practices and tools from the organic sector, from the soil preservation techniques, and we also work with some chemicals in order to grow over 12 culture, 12 uh, crops six uh, palms on uh, 145 hectares, six uh, crops on 179 hectares, wheat, uh, wheat and so on, and arboriculture on two hectares. So we are widely mechanized. As Eva said, I, will, I won't linger on that, why did we think about cover crops? It was a sanitary issue with winter crops that uh, fought against blight, with the Creepam uh, publications in 2014 that uh, motivated us. And what really boosted uh, that was a territorial uh, dynamic that needs to be mentioned. It's the Regain project. It brings together companies, local institutes, uh, agricultural development institutions that aim at developing uh, agroecological transition for uh, many um, producers, as many producers as possible in the region. In the uh, natural park of the Verdon, we have a network of agricultural producers that are called uh, soil. This network uh, counts 27 farmers uh, since 2014 and 2016, as on the slide. The uh, objective is to have a lot of soils analysis that are really de looking deep into chemical, organic, and biological life. So we have poor soils, but it's not, uh, you know, fate. It's not, uh, we're not doomed to have that. It can be improved through practices that some farmers had already started, and it showed that restitution of distillation uh, waste, for instance, could actually improve the quality of the soil. So organic matter is really what's at the core of our issues. The uh, organic uh, matter um, percentage that is in deficit, there are two ways of decomposing uh, organic matter. Here we have a big deficit, but there's also the free one, which is free, which is which we'll, we also have a deficit for. So we're mainly lacking free organic matters, so uh, uh, fertilizing crops and so on.
uh, we, composting is less lacking. So two years ago, we created our working group to work on three t topics, cover crops to uh, increase uh, free uh, organic matter, composting uh, distillation wastes, and a third uh, pillar, diversification of rotation, which is a basis in agronomy, of course. So concretely, on the uh, farm, uh, out of 100 hectares of lavender hybrid, about uh, a certain part is covered. 10 hectares in sanitary spring uh, covers with uh, poetius. And uh, most of our cover crops is for autumn with the Cipan uh, model, a mix of three species or one species but rotating in the inter row, that is to say every year we change species. So let's start with a spring cover crop. How do we implement it? As Eva said, there is an equipment issue. I will not give all the technical aspects, but it is an issue. We chose uh, hoppers, uh, like this one. Uh, we have three row um, hoppers. And depending on the speed uh, we're uh, doing that at, we can uh, actually have low costs. And so it's a two-in-one action. But yes, they are, uh, there's the physical barrier against the leaf hopper, uh, dilution of uh, the stings by the hopper, increase of biodiversity. How do we do that? Well, you can see here that this works between the combs and the teeth on the hoe and they're buried by the combs into the soil, so there's no real transformation by the hoe, it's just on the hopper level. Uh, weeding now, well, the idea is to diminish the entry products. So, as you saw, we have an, uh, on the left, you've got agricultural culture on, in the parcel, which allow us to have mechanical weeding on the row, and as you can see where that's the beginning of March, you can see the crops are beginning to rise. And then afterwards, we come with old hoes in the rows, as you see on the right. We manage to maintain the cover cobs and just lift the weeds. And this allows us really keep tidy the inter rows and maintain the quality of the crop. We use a little bit of chemistry. If not, we wouldn't have such clean lavender. You mustn't be fooled into thinking otherwise. We're always working about maintaining the cover plants, diminishing the entry products, any kind of intake. So we look at putting at the plants at two meters of interval and we spray. We have a spray culture, which is fairly classic in farming. And here we uh, uh, can own, we divide the doses in two and treat all the plants on the roots. We are allowed. That allows us to maintain the cover crop and to reduce the amount of water or product that's being used. Here's an example of cover development in spring. We let this diversifies. This is critical crop. Erisa, what are they? The kind of wild lentils. Uh, I think they're very typical in our area, but I don't know if they grow elsewhere, actually. And the idea is to have not only have just one species, but to uh, really try and fight the competition between plants. This was the end of June during the, the planting of young um, June. And you can see that when you're, pardon, not the planting, but the picking. You know, here you're seeing the two-in-one actions to minimize costs. And, and fuel costs, and at the same time, we can hoe the rows. Practices which work. Well, how about destruction? When we're destroying the cover crop, what do we do? We have biomass into the in, as into row crop. How do we manage that? That was really a hindrance in how we developed the practice. So we developed grinders, grinders which was designed to fit the practice. It was designed in the cooperative, looking with a local partner, and there, we contacted an, an, an Italian constructor, so you've got two rotators working around, and what this does is it allows us to destroy the cover crop, which has reached maturity, to, from the front and the back, we put another uh, tool at the back we can, so that we can optimize the passage of the tractor. Here's another example of, of destruction of these cover crops. That's good. We, while they were destroying it, they were able to take photos. That's pretty good. Now, I think this technique has proven its worth. It works as well. So we can manage biomass, and we can do all that we want to do. The idea is to make sure that the, the row is kept clean, 
And the Interro will allow us to do this as long as we do manage the biomass cover. It's very interesting. Here's some results with regards uh, the spring cover. That's another mix that we talked about. We use it most, more in autumn. You look at the dry biomass use per sector for interro cover. You have to multiply it by three to have a full equivalent, to really understand what we're doing. Because in cover in cover crops, we have to see what's happening out in the middle of the field. Given the climate in the south, in spring, we can put out 500 kilos and 1.5 tons of dry matter per hectare. So that's quite a lot, 5 to 15 tons, that's the equivalent. So it begins to represent a certain amount of biomass which comes to bring organic material to the soil. For autumn cover then, same principle, different period. We sow at the end of uh, August, beginning of September, and the objectives are in front of you. Maximize capitalizing the biomass, minimize competition. And as we said avant, uh, before, we're working against these wheat midges or midges um, and so if we can come out of winter without them, these, these midges could actually stop. We want to make sure that these wheat midges cannot come out because we're keeping the temperature of the soil as it should be. We have some pro great many problems with these midgets. Another example of winter cover in November 2000, it was brown mustard. A nice development of the plant, nice competition with the weeds, as you can see. But we also try and have spontaneous cover, as you can see on the right. We have kind of false rocket, which developed on its own. And, you know, we thought, well, why, why destroy it when we can let it grow just now? As long as we've got the tools in place, we've got the hose, we can actually hoe the row, so we keep a diameter, keep a space between the weed and the flower, so it's win-win, it's, it's good for everyone. Upkeep of the autumn cover you can see this was done we were hoeing on the 27th of November now if you if it can tolerate people walking on the soil um, maintain the cover in spite of being crushed by tractor wheels or people walking on it then it's positive what's happening in in winter well in January under the snow it doesn't look like much but look what happens there was biomass product produced and we can see the destruction of it on the 15th of March we make some real efforts here You've got the same tool in place, the front grinder, the two-in-one, and it's wonderful. Here's some photos for you. So the lavender is resting. There is no competition. We're protecting the soil, and we are preventing weeds growing beside it. And a few more results, very pondered results. You can see you've got a ton of dry biomass for mustard and 630 kilos for Phacelia. We could do better, but it's not a bad um, result. Another example of spontaneous cover. This was the spring cover. This was uh, this was tritical crop that we let take seed. And the destruction was in August. And it re-sowed itself, if you like. And this is what we had in October. So we have spontaneous, re spontaneous re-sowing. And the idea then has been reached. The, in the interro space is clean. And it's can, this can also be a, a way of developing our approach, looking at these um, covers which actually re -sew themselves. So to conclude, some results from our GIEE. -E. These are results from last year. This year, we, we went around the... Uh, we went around everybody to get the final results, and I can share them with you if you're interested. But look at the two mixes that were tested in autumn, a mixed uh, in Provence to have a diversified um, lavender on the right, on the left, excuse me, and the homemade mission from my colleagues who adapted the situation to suit his needs. And these were sown about on about 45 hectares, and we had some pretty good developments in place, actually. We, we had a wait in uh, January, 600 kilos of dry matter per hectare. A home cover, as we say, the homemade cover, pretty much the same, great potential. We want to do more with biomass. And when it works, well, it's good. It can give you 1.4 tons of biomass per hectare. I have another farming uh, colleague with the same sort of diversified mix as we used in, in Provence before. 
using parcels on the slopes, quite steep slopes, because obviously there there's problems linked to erosion. So cover crops in, in winter is extremely paramount. That was for last year. For this year, I've got some figures for you. In spite of the climate, well, actually, the climate were getting better for us. We had a minimum of 1.8 tons of dry biomass per hectare measured weight last week. The cycle has not come full circle, so we're hoping to have more. And a maximum with the homemade mixture, oh, this one of our colleague, he got to 2.4 tons of dried matter per hectare of lavender. And that means if you multiply it by three, it's 7.2. That's the equivalent of a full, so a full tank. So there, the biomass is actually becoming very interesting and compensates the demineralization of organic matter every year. So, and this helps to go hand in hand with our improvements. So in conclusion then, we didn't really notice any impact on the yield if you destroyed the cover crops in the autumn, but how can you reconcile the practices with the material that's available? We're waiting for the analysis results of the soil, because I've given you the ones upstream for 2021. The next ones will be done in 22. So we don't have any feed, any insight into the impact. We don't not, We don't think it's going up by at least 1%, but we hope have to, we hope to see a slight cont- improvement. It works well in our uh, we, in the 1,000 hectares we've got 500 in lavender. We have 150 uh, to 200 per year covered. So we're trying to be a showcase for these best practices, this best practice, and then trying to roll this out as much as we can across our territory. And thank you very much for your attention.